Welcome back, everybody. Here we are continuing our journey through the Western Cascades. I'm Howie Brownstein of the Columbine School of Botanical Studies. And I'm Stephen Yeager with the Columbine School of Botanical Studies. And, and we're here in the lava. On behalf of Mountain Rose Herbs, we're here in the lava, the lava beds. A pretty exciting place. Some of the newest lava we have here. This is new lava from the the Belknap Crater, I believe. Belknap Crater. Was correct. it like hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago? No, I can't hundreds. remember. Them. Yeah. It wasn't that long though, um, compared to much lava. Uh, we're 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 at middle elevations in the Hudsonian zones in the Western Cascades of Oregon, and you know what I like about this place, Steve? What's that, Howie? This place rocks. <laughs> Well, here we have another shrub. We have another shrub, Stephen. Another shrub. Another shrub. It isn't blooming. It isn't even in fruit. It's the wrong time of year. But I know this plant is Ceanothus. Ceanothus. See and know this plant. See and know this. The genus is Ceanothus. This is Ceanothus volutinus. I wonder what family it's in, Stephen. This is in the Romnaceae. The Romnaceae. The common name for this family would be the Buckthorn family. Oh, the Buckthorns. I know the Buckthorns. They're a very lovely family. I've had them over the, for dinner, but right now we're trying to limit our dinner parties. Oh, yes, well, I know how it is. Well, this plant here, uh, this plant here, uh, you may know it as red root. Although the red root on the herb trade is Ceanothus americanus. This is, is that what? This is a, a different species. The Ceanothus americanus, the red root, or some uh, botanists called the New Jersey tea, grows in the eastern part of the United States. And it's a low growing, lower growing matted plant where the Ceanothus volutinus, you can see, is more of an erect shrub, more of an erect shrub. And uh, this is the Ceanothus volutinus. All the Ceanothus species have a very interesting uh, synergistic uh, connection in their roots. Would you like to talk about that? I'd love to, Howie. So Ceanothus fix nitrogen in the soil. They're, they're what they're called actinorhizal. They have nodules on their roots that actually fix nitrogen in the soil. You may be familiar with this uh, phenomenon with Fabaceae's or in the pea family. They, they fix nitrogen in the soil. This is a slightly different mechanism but it has a similar effect where it's uh, stimulating, uh, fixing nitrogen in the soil. Other plants, other woody shrubs that do this are alders, ceanothus. There's some other woody plants that, as well as that fix nitrogen in the soil. Yes, I, I think it's interesting because this plant fixes nitrogen, it comes in after disturbance, it comes in after fire. Uh, here, it likes it here in the lava it likes it in the east side of Oregon, where in the Ponderosa Pine Zone, where the fire burns all the time. You can look up, the, you can look up on a hillside, and it's a sea of nothis. Sometimes it's, there's so much sea and nothis, and you're walking through it, you're just walking on the sea and nothis, and sometimes I just feel like I'm surfing on the sea of nothis. Sea and nothis. You also find Ceanothus together with Manzanita forms uh, the dominant plants in the Southern California chaparral. And so there are many, many species of Ceanothus in California. They have many different forms um, of the Ceanothus species. Some are tree-like, some are shrubby, some are on the ground and crawl. They look completely different, but their flowers always look the same. It's so thick and sticky that if I do this, it sticks to my finger. It's just covered with gooey ooze. And when I smell it, mmm. Oh, that's nice. It smells so good. Let's see. Oh, Try it home. Uh, this sticky laurel makes a fine pleasure tea. Not most Ceanothus leaves wouldn't do that, but this one does. In fact, it smells so good that uh, Christina Sanchez of everyleafspeaks.org takes these leaves because they smell so good and makes a hydrosol with them, which she uses for smell. 
Ceanothus is very interesting. Uh, some of the species here in the Pacific Northwest, they come in after there's this practice where they come in and they cut down all the trees. It's called clear cutting. And then after the clear cut, the Ceanothus comes in. It comes in really thick, it comes in after the clear cut. And uh, <clears throat> it was thought in the past that the Ceanothus would inhibit the trees from growing back. So in the past, they would hire uh, individuals to come in and hack down all the ceanothus because they thought the ceanothus was outcrowding or preventing the second growth of trees to come in after the clear cut. But what they later found out is that the ceanothus is actually healing the clear cut. The ceanothus seeds live in the soil. They live in the soil and that some of them have been dated to still be able to germinate after 150 years. And how they germinate is with fire. They need fire, they need a scarification and a certain heat to uh, have the seeds sprout and make new plants. And so, and so that with the combination of fixing nitrogen in the soil, the ceanothus is actually healing or preparing this, uh, the clear cut to be able for those new trees to come back healthy and have a forest again. And we would see that you would see this kind of phenomenon in nature when uh, after a fire, you'd say, you'd have a fire, which almost is similar to a clear cut in some ways, uh, not really, but um, the end result is that the trees are gone. And then the, the ceanothus would come in, fix nitrogen in the soil, and the new uh, trees would grow back. And so these days the practices have changed. They're not as much trying to eliminate the ceanothus because it actually aids in uh, rejuvenating the forest for the next growth of trees. Thanks for watching. It's been a real blast out here in the lava with y'all. So we have to get back to work. Get back to the office. See you next time. Bye.